I'm already starting the video. Oh, I'm live. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on in and welcome to Rejuvenate Worship. Hallelujah. Come on in, come on in. Hallelujah. Give you all time to get here this afternoon. We're excited. I'm excited to be back online with you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on in this afternoon. Give you all an opportunity. And when you're here, begin to just tag and share and let us know that you're here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We certainly give God praise for the opportunity um, to be back today, to be online. He's kept us another week, gave us another chance to give him praise and to give him glory and to give him honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got about two more minutes or a minute and a half or so. And we're going to open with a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. Truly, God has been so faithful to us. I don't know about you, but my testimony remains the same. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, glory to God. If it had not been for his grace and for his mercy, if it had not been. Thank you, Jesus. We give God praise. For keeping us and preserving us and watching over us. We give him reverence this afternoon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Got about 30 more seconds. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Wonderful Savior, hallelujah. We give God the praise. We give him the glory. We give him the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Here we are, 12 noon. Welcome to Rejuvenate Worship, where I am yours truly, Pastor Denisha. We know that you will be refreshed, revived, and renewed. We give God high praise for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he is going to do. Hallelujah. This is Rejuvenate Worship, where life is rejuvenated in Christ and hope is revived. Hallelujah. We know if it had not been for God being on our side, if it had not been for his grace and for his mercy, we would not be here today. So we give God the praise indeed. We want to open up at this time with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today and we just magnify your name. We celebrate you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We know, oh God, that if it had not been for you being on our our side, we would not be here today if it had not been for your grace and for your mercy, for your love, your kindness, and your compassion. We wouldn't still be standing. It is because of you, God, that we are still here. It is because you are constantly showing us your love and your compassion. It is because you're constantly making ways out of no way. You're constantly opening doors for us. And so for this reason, we say thank you. For this reason, we magnify your name. Where would we be, oh God? God, if it had not been for you. So we're asking in the name of Jesus that on this day, 
the first day of the fifth month of this year, 20 and 21, that you would move by your spirit, that you would look on the, the people of God, that you would look on your people everywhere in Jesus name. It is our prayer, oh God, that you would refresh, revive and renew. Somebody today needs your encouragement. Somebody today needs your strength. Somebody today needs to know that you're yet faithful. You're yet on time. You're yet working miracles. Somebody needs to know that you still have a plan and somebody needs to be reminded that you are the sovereign God, the one who is, the one who was, hallelujah, and the one who is to come. Somebody needs to know, oh God, that you're still the God of miracles. You're still the God of signs. You're still the God of wonders. Have your way. Have your holy way. Demonstrate your power, oh God, for that person that's in the hospital right now. Somebody, oh God, needs you to blow the minds of the doctors. Demonstrate your comfort, oh God, for that family who just lost their loved ones. Speak strength, God, and comfort to their hearts. Somebody, oh God, needs to be encouraged to know that you're still turning things around, that a time of recovery is coming, that a time of deliverance is coming, that a time of restoration, somebody, God, somebody needs to be encouraged today. Somebody needs to be strengthened. Somebody needs to be reminded that everything is going to be all right. I'm praying that you would lift the burdens, lift the stresses, lift it, God, in the name of Jesus, the weight and the pressure that your people have been under. Lift it in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, God, for strength and encouragement that you would renew our faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We call to you because you said that we could. You told us in your word that if we would call to you, then you would show us great and mighty things. We ignite our faith today. We connect our faith with one another, knowing, oh God, that as we pray in faith, you hear us and you're answering us. So answer us today and, and, and grant peace Answer us today and grant strength. Hallelujah. Answer us today and revive our spirits. Rekindle our fire for you. Rekindle our drive for you. Give us the strength and the desire, the endurance to run after you in spite of what we're dealing with. God, in the name, in the name of Jesus, somebody needs to know that you're yet able you're the same God yesterday, hallelujah, today, hallelujah, and forever. They need to be reminded that you're still a deliverer. You're still a restorer. Somebody just needs to be reminded. Glory to God, hallelujah. So we give you praise. Ready the hearts and the minds of your people for what you shall say. Ready the hearts and the minds of your people that they are able to receive your word today, God. In the name, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah, have your way, God. We invite you into our homes, into our environments, into our atmosphere, wherever we are, wherever we see this live, wherever we see this video, we welcome you here. We welcome you here, God. Hallelujah. Feel this place. Feel this place, God, with your peace. Feel this place, God. Hallelujah. Feel in the Isaiah. Feel this place, God, with your presence, God, with your comfort, with your and feel it with your glory. In the name of Jesus. And we will give you praise. We will give you glory. Hallelujah. And we will give you the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. Will you just, hallelujah, take a moment and just worship with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just take a moment and celebrate God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know it's been difficult. I know you've had some highs and some lows, but he's still worthy. I know you've had some moments where you've had to cry, but he's still worthy. Hallelujah. He's still worthy of the glory in the heart. He's still worthy of our praise today. Glory 
Hallelujah. He's still worthy of our worship. He's still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. He's still Yahweh. He's still God. Our experiences, glory to God, our situations, our feelings, it doesn't dictate who he is. He's still worthy. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah at all times. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. He's always working. Even behind the scenes, he's always working. That's why we call him Waymaker. Because he's constantly making waves that we don't even see, that we can't even understand. Hallelujah. God, you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. Hallelujah. He is God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
never stop, never stop working, never stop, never stop working, even when I can't see it, you're working, and even when I can't feel it, you're working, you never stop, never stop working, you never stop, never stop working, you never stop, never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, oh, 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 oh. way make miracle work, your promise, keep a light in the darkness, my God, and the background of this passage of scripture and I'm hoping that we'll have time to work our way all the way up to this verse and if we don't we will pick up next week but it's just who God is when we start to think on who he is thank you Jesus it's a prompt. It's a call to worship. It's a call to remember his worth. And how sovereign God really is. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Hallelujah, I'm using a slightly different device today, so you all forgive me if I'm looking down a little more than usual. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 27, New King James Version reads it like this. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And my just claim is passed over by my God. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. And my just claim is passed over by my God. Hallelujah. Why, why do you say that God don't see you? Why do you think in your head that God has ignored your situation? Why do you believe that what you're going through has escaped our sovereign God? Why 
do you believe that he cannot see your circumstance and your trial? Why do you think that he don't see the brokenness of your heart? Why, oh Jacob, why, oh Israel, do you think that God don't know what you're dealing with? Hmm. Why? I don't, I don't right now, I don't have a title. Maybe the title is just why. Why do you think that what you're going through has escaped God? Sometimes when we find ourselves in different situations that persist, Whereas it seems like it's one thing after another and it's, it's not one thing and then it's another thing and then it's another thing, but it's one thing on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. Seems like you're doing everything that you know to do. You're praying, you're fasting, you're pursuing, you're pursuing God, you're, you're in your word, you're remaining faithful, and this happens. And it feels like it knocks you off of your feet, but you find yourself getting back up and striving towards God in spite of your obstacle. But then there's another obstacle. And you find yourself still striving, I'm pushing through, and I'm fighting my way through, but then something else happens on top of that, and on top of that. And the enemy would make us think there's no way I can be going through all this, and God sees me and don't do anything. What in the world? Why? The prophet utters to the people of God. Why do you think that the sovereign God who's made so many ways for you before has forgotten about you now? I know that what you're dealing with is rough. And I know that what you're dealing with and fighting through is difficult and sometimes it feels like your strength escapes you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? When you look at verse 28, he says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He neither faints nor is weary. Have you forgotten who God is? Have you forgotten how sovereign he is? How omnipotent. He is, he doesn't get weary, he doesn't faint, he doesn't, he doesn't, his, he, he, he doesn't not see you, he doesn't slack on his job. Let's go and gather some background and some context for this chapter. And I've already said that we're going to have to continue this. I've already told you that we're going to have to, glory to God, hallelujah. Even when it's hard, he sees you. He knows your situation. He's sensitive to your circumstance and your condition. He understands the way that you, hallelujah, the way that you take. He knows all about it. Our context, let's give background. The book of Isaiah is comprised of at least four different major scenarios. 
chapter 40 opens up the third. Now, as the second scenario comes to an end, in chapter 39, verse 6 and 7, it sets the tone and the background for the shift in transition in the theme that's about to take place in the third scenario. Isaiah 39 and 6 says it like this. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house, he prophesies to King Hezekiah. And what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you whom you will beget and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. As we, as we shift into chapter 40, we see a thematic shift. Previous scenes, previous chapters, we've seen how Isaiah was used, the prophet Isaiah was used to prophesy judgment and indictment to the children of Israel and to Judah because of their failure to trust in the Lord. And here in chapter 40, all of that changes. Now he wants you to be encouraged. You may have made some mistakes he said, but there will come a time of great deliverance and restoration. Hallelujah. So he begins to encourage the people to trust God. Know that it's hard this crisis that you're in, this situation that you're dealing with, but he says, trust God. God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says it like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. The crisis that the people or the crisis that you may be experiencing right now is not because God lacks an ability to deliver you. Remember all the times that he brought you through previously. All the situations that he snatched you out of previously. God does not lack the ability to deliver. We see in Isaiah chapter 36. I mean chapter 37 and verse 36. Where the Lord sends an angel to go out. Into the camp of the Assyrians. To destroy them for attacking and blaspheming against God and attacking the children of Israel. Think back over every time you found yourself in a difficult situation and God brought you out. Your body was sick and you did not know if you would get well. Fear came to your mind because you did not know how things would turn around. There were times that maybe you thought this was it for you. There were times that you felt previously in life that things could not get worse, but God snatched you out and he brought you through it. Think back on the time, hallelujah, when, when your back was up against the wall and you weren't sure how you were going to make ends meet, but God worked a miracle of provision. Remember how he turned things around for you. You had to go to work and you didn't know who was going to be able to watch your kids. You didn't have the money you needed to pay a babysitter or daycare, but God opened a door. You were laid off. You didn't know what you were going to do when it seemed like nobody wanted to hire. But somebody walked up to you and gave you the amount of money that you needed. To sustain you. Hallelujah. And to keep you. Think back. On all the ways that God has made for you. And kept you. The prophet prophesies. Don't forget who God is. There shall come a time. Where there shall be great and massive deliverance. What you're going through right now, he encourages, is a part of the sovereignty of God. It is a part of his master plan for your life and for his kingdom. We are only still here.
fear because God himself has kept us. Remember Jeremiah 29 and 11? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. He gives us these words of encouragement throughout the Holy Scripture. Romans 8 and 28. For all things work together. He prophesies. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare has ended. A time of deliverance is coming, he says. Verse 3 in chapter 4, he says, The voice of the Lord crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God is an indication that the glory of the Lord is about to restore you. The glory of the Lord is about to come back to Jerusalem. The glory of the Lord is about to permeate your life and turn things around. Take comfort, he says, for the enemy that you see right now, the situation that you're in right now, the circumstance that you're fighting through right now. It won't last. Verse 6 says, the voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. In other words, the Babylons who are having them in bondage, the Babylons who are, who are keeping them in captive, who are making them serve and work in their kingdom, they're soon going to melt away. In other words, what you're dealing with, your enemy, your situation, your circumstance, your crisis, he said, God says, I see it. And I've already fashioned a plan to destroy the enemy and to bring you out. I'm bringing you to a place of restoration. I'm bringing you to a, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm bringing you to a place of restoration. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I know that what's before you does not seem like something that you could really find yourself getting through. But God says, I see you. I see your circumstance. I see your tears. And I know the brokenness of your heart. Comfort is coming. Peace. Is coming. Deliverance is coming. We're encouraged to trust the sovereign plan of God. In other words, it will not be this way always. It won't feel like this always. It won't, it won't last like this always Jesus is coming that verse 3 prepare the way of the Lord was a manifested indication uh, where John the Baptist stood in the wilderness and began to announce and proclaim Jesus the Messiah the Messianic King is coming to restore he's coming to you and he's coming with restoration in his hands. He's coming with peace in his hands. He's coming with deliverance in his hands. He's coming with wholeness in his hands. He's coming with healness in his hand. Healing is in his hand. He's coming to comfort, to restore, and to revive. He's coming to refresh you and to encourage you and to let you know that all is well. Remember who it is that you serve. Remember who it is that created the universe. Remember who it is, he says. Don't forget the sovereignty of God. Lift up 
lift your eyes, he says in 26, and see who's created all these things. This is the God that we serve. The one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or think. This is the God that we call on. This is the God who loves us and he loves you. He sees you right where you are. So why do you say, oh, Jacob? Why do you speak, oh, Israel? Why do you speak, body of Christ? Why do you say, rejuvenate, that God don't see me? He sees you. He sees what you're experiencing. He knows your physical ailments. He knows the mental anguish. He says, I see you. Your way isn't hidden. A proper understanding of God's dealing in life calls for us to understand his perspective. He says, I've got a way already made. I've got a door already opened. I'm bringing healing and restoration. We don't serve a high priest who is not sensitive to our sufferings and sensitive to our dealings. The God we serve, he understands. He's empathetic. He's sympathetic. He feels what you feel. And he's coming to restore, to strengthen, and to renew. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. He's coming to restore, to strengthen, and to renew. I know that when hard times come and when we find ourselves dealing with issues and trials, that it's easy to focus more on our trial and our trouble than who it is we serve. But I stopped by just to remind you, God sees you. He knows what you're dealing with and he's going to deliver. He is going to restore. He is going to strengthen. He's not forgot about you. This prophetic declaration was to a people who were broken, who were removed from their homes and their families. This, this declaration was to a people who were in bondage, who were in a strange land, away from everything that they knew, surrounded by foreign customs. The word of God came in the midst of this crisis. God will restore. It doesn't make sense what you're going through. We can't understand it. We can't fathom it. We don't understand why God would allow it to work out like this. But it's a part of his plan. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You could not begin to fathom the mind of God. But he's got a plan. And so all he says to you is, just trust me. If you have to cry and trust me, cry and trust me, but trust me. Trust me, he says. I'm about to bring it together. It hurts. It's difficult. It's trying. It's hard. But I'm about to bring it together. And sooner or later, you're going to know why. Sooner or later, you're going to see. Sooner or later, you'll understand the plan of God. You'll see the master plan unfold sooner or later. It's going to turn in your favor. Sooner or later, it's going to turn around. God, we trust you today. 
We trust you to know that it won't always be like this. That if you've allowed us to experience this hardness, this trouble, if you've allowed us to go through whatever it is that we're facing right now, then it is for a reason. That as hard as it is right now, the good that's coming out of this will outweigh it. In chapter 40, verse 5, he says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. As difficult as it is right now, the good that this hard situation is producing shall outweigh the bad that you're experiencing right now. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. God, reveal your glory. God, reveal your glory. Let us see that the other side of this is better. Let us see that the other side of this is greater. Reveal God to us your glory. Reveal God to us your glory. What does that mean? Something good is coming out of this. Whether it's salvation of loved ones, whether it's whether it's restoration of our faith, a renewed fire in our soul as we pursue after God. Whatever it is, God, we trust you. There's a song that says, it won't always be like this. God's perfecting concerning me. And sooner or later, it'll turn in your favor. It's turning around for me. Around for me. Around for me. Around for me, it's turning around for me, around for me, around for me, around for me, it's turning around for me. Will you just declare that over your life? I'm not going to feel like this always. My life isn't going to look like this always. The glory of God shall be revealed. And I'm going to see some things turn around. I'm going to see some things work out. I'm going to see some things manifest. I'm going to understand. After a while. It's turning around for me. I want to pray for you. I know that it's been difficult. I know. I know it's been rough. But God sees you. And he's here to strengthen you today so that you can get through this. He's here to restore you and refresh you so that you can get through this. He's helping you to get through this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today that came to encourage us and to remind us that you see us and that you know everything that we're facing. You see us and you know our heartache, our trial, our sickness, our condition, our circumstance. Our way isn't hidden from you. Our, our, our plea isn't hidden from you. Our tears 
are not hidden from you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, even now for the Hale family, that you would grant supernatural strength. When their strength begins to run out, let your strength take over. You said in our weakness, your strength would be made perfect. Hold them in the comfort of your arms and allow them to feel the warmth of your embrace. Touch that mother, touch that cousin, touch that sibling, touch that child. Strengthen and encourage the hearts of this family. Strengthen and encourage the hearts of your people everywhere. Mend the brokenness. Wipe their tears and comfort them when they feel that no one could possibly understand what they're dealing with. When we feel that nobody could understand what we're dealing with, help us to remember that even when we're alone, you're there. You see, you know, and you understand. Restore your people, God. Strengthen your people, God. Heal your people. Encourage your people in the name of Jesus. Meet us right where we are. Visit us in our homes, God. When we're washing dishes, when we're getting ready for bed, let us feel the peace of God. The peace. Let us feel the peace of God. Let the peace of God rest. The peace of God rest. Let it rest on our minds and rule in our heart. Send your peace, God. The peace of God. Send it throughout the bloodline. When we go to work, peace. When we go to school, peace. As we prepare for arrangements, peace. Bind confusion. I bind torment. I bind fear. I bind stress, worry, doubt. I come against it now in the name of Jesus. Peace to the minds of your people. Peace in our bodies. We're as sickness wants to come. Peace to our bodies. No weapon formed shall prosper. Peace when we lay head to pillow. I thank you now that there is victory in everything that we're facing and in everything that we're dealing with. There is victory. In the name of Jesus, peace be multiplied. In Jesus' name. Look on your people everywhere. Let us see things working out. Even if it's not the grand deliverance, let us see your hand in everything that we're dealing with. Keep your people encouraged. Break the back of the enemy and let us know that it is working together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We want to offer salvation. This God that we serve, this great, this mighty God that we trust, he loves you right where you are. And your situation, your hardness, your trials, it doesn't escape him. He sees you. He knows and he understands. And he's standing at the door of your heart with open arms. He's saying, just let me in. I'll do the rest. Just accept me into your heart. I'll do the rest. We're not worried about the issues that we have, the habits that we have, the things that we find ourselves dealing with. God says, you let me in and I'll help you clean it up. 
Submit to me today. Invite me into your heart today, God says. He says, I died for your sins. I died for your trespasses. Let me in today. If that's you, if you're deciding that today is the day, I want to know that I'm right with God. I want to know that God is in my life for sure. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. Forgive me and come into my heart. In Jesus' name, I want to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, then right now, in this moment, you're already saved. It's simple as that. The book of Romans tells us that if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart, you're saved. Welcome to the body of Christ. If you need a church home, Rejuvenate welcomes you. Let us know. Send us a message. Put it in the comments, inboxes. Send us a message through one of our websites, newcovenantfaith.org. And let us know that today you made a choice to accept Christ. Let's pray with you. Let us talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. We're here for you. God loves you so much. All of you. I just want you to be reminded. Sometimes when we look at our situations, the love of God escapes us. It's hard, it's hard to see it. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And even when you can't feel it, he's working behind the scenes and he's right by your side. And I want you to know that I love you too. I love you. But as much as I love you, God loves you more. And this time we're preparing to receive our offering through our worship and giving. We're inviting you to sow your tithes and your offerings. Whatever amount. A tithe is a tenth, a tenth of your increase. And then release your offering to the Lord. Our cash app is New Covenant Faith. You can give via Givelify at New Covenant Faith in Columbus. You can give via any of our websites, newcovenantfaith.org or therejuvenatechurch.org. God loves you so much. I just feel like somebody needs to be reminded. He loves you so much and he sees you. You're not alone in what you're going through. What you're dealing with. You're not alone. He loves you. Don't get weary. Don't get weary in your well-doing. Just keep going. Keep going and keep growing. Don't faint. You're getting ready to reap. He loves you. Don't faint. Don't faint, Sister Terry. Don't faint, Sister Juanita. Don't faint, Sister Carmen. Don't faint. God sees you. You're going to reap. Don't give up. Don't give up. You're going to read. Join us. Join us on Monday night. Let's pray together. Let us pray with you. Join us Monday night. Prayer helps us get strengthened. And then join us on Thursday for our Bible talk. The word of God, as we break it down, it revitalizes you and it gives you the strength 
to press through your hard situations. Join us on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Wherever you are, even if you don't want to be seen, turn your camera off and just listen to the word. Let it pour into your spirit and strengthen you. Rejuvenate. God's got plans for us. God's got plans for you. Don't forsake the fellowship. You're dealing with too much. Don't forsake the fellowship. Make it a priority so that God can strengthen you. Let him strengthen you throughout the week so that you're not fighting alone. I'm praying that God would be with you. That God would strengthen and encourage you and would renew your joy. That in spite of what you're dealing with, and no matter how difficult your situation, that your joy will remain. That the peace of God will rest on you. In Jesus' name, shalom.